Um, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. We are checking in on Genius again. Um, there are a few things on our minds, and then I just thought we'd see where this went. Um, I look. I, I was really pleased. I, I met up with um, with Sam Reed the um, third here in Philadelphia, down at Educon, and. Um, Realize amazing things that he's doing with his ninth graders um, on Genius. Um, have noticed also some new things on Genius, like on class pages, you can put up video and you can um, you can put up personal um, posts and so forth. Um, and and then the, a couple of people who were going to come and I don't, they may still be coming are working on Shakespeare. So I went to look at all the Shakespeare stuff and Stephen, your name was all over Shakespeare and <laughs> all over other things too. Yeah. Um, and then Kevin Hodgins said, you know, do you know Greg and Ian? Because they do a lot of work um, on Genius too. So great that you guys have all come to kind of talk about Genius and um, Annotating online and working on using that in our classrooms. Um, yeah, why don't we very quickly? We'll get to you last, Stephen, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, and Sam is still working out his computer there as we go. Um, Greg, why don't you start off, introduce yourself, and just briefly introduce um, where you're using uh, Genius at this point. Welcome. You're muted still. <laughs> My name is um, Greg McBerry. I'm at uh, Southern Connecticut State University, and um, I've uh, played around with Genius. I mean, I don't. I'm not a. I've had my classes play there. I've introduced it in my teaching classrooms. But currently, Ian and I are using it as part of a project called Walk My World, um, which is um, a poetry project with kids from all over the the world, from kindergarten to um, doctorate students. Um, and often each week we start with a poem um, on Genius and ask people to read and annotate that first. Um, and that's, you know, how we're trying to really get them to, to play with the words and the meanings of the poem. So that's, and we've been looking at there and I, in the same way. I was so excited because it seemed like every day I'd click on something, there would be a new feature um, like, you know, yeah. um, on the classroom pages. So it's, it's been a, it's, it's a fun little time. Cool. Ian, welcome. Hey, everybody. My name is Ian O'Byrne. Uh, I am uh, currently at University of New Haven, uh, in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, as Greg just mentioned, we started messing around with Walk My World uh, last year. Uh, what we would do is we would have people, uh, if you go on Twitter and look at pound Walk My World or the hashtag Walk My World, you can see uh, all the cool stuff that people are sharing. Uh, last year, we would put poetry up. Uh, on Genius, um, you know, on Lit Genius, and, and, and all of a sudden people from Genius reached out and they basically said, well, what are you doing? We, we noticed all this content's happening there. What are you, what are you doing? Uh, so we, we, we had a couple, you know, meetings with them on Hangouts, and um, I basically just mess around with it. I uh, write horrible poetry and I put it up there. I put other people's poetry up there. Um, I, I I do it because I want to force, I work with pre-service teachers and, and in-service teachers, and I want to force them to think about, um, I want to problematize text and problematize their relationship with text and force them to think about different ways we can use technology to mess around with text. So I, I basically do it to instigate and, and disrupt and problematize the way that my teachers and students think about text. So. Welcome, thank you, Sam. Do you hey. have you're on here twice, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't disappear we'll, later. We'll get you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so. Any um, way to get some light in front of you, though? You're kind of that's better. That's yeah. much better. Perfect. I'm happy. Well, you'll work on that. But introduce yourself. Welcome. Yeah, so uh, I, I teach here in Philly, as uh, Paul might have, might have said, and I was really excited that I was, like, bubbling with, like, sharing at Educon all the cool stuff I'm trying to play, messing around with uh, Rap Genius, but I got introduced to it by coming to a teaching um, teaching teachers, teachers uh, forum where, was it Jeremy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where Jeremy was Jeremy at D. that point. Yeah. Uh, introducing all the cool stuff that was on Rap Genius, 
and as I've been playing around with, I'm seeing it's evolving even as 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 I speak. Um, and you know, I'm looking forward to sharing some of the some of the stuff that I'm doing with my students. In fact, I'm launching a, a hip hop seminar with my students. These are students that. Um, like some of our other students need to uh, take uh, like a liter it's like a literacy intervention, but these kids don't need uh, these kids need like an, a literacy enrichment more so than an intervention, and so um, like two two times or three times a week I'm a, I'm gonna be hosting a, a hip hop seminar and we're going to be using Rep Genius extensively. In fact, we're going to start off by using um, the decoded text that's uh, posted up on on Rep Genius from Jay Z. And um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. We, sh we kick it off tomorrow. And you, you've had your students post their own work there as well, right? Yeah, and so uh, I've, I've had my students post. Uh, we, we've been doing these I am from poems. And generally I have kids that are uh, like sometimes I got this one kid. He's always working on raps, and he's always like doing something, not doing the work that's assigned. And I'm like, well, you know, let me, see your, um, let me see your work. I'm like, oh, man, can we post it? And we posted his work, and the kids were, like, super buzzing about his work. And then after that, he started doing, like, regular work, you know, because just validating his his, his skill and his craft, just, I guess he had to prove to me that he could do the regular class work as, too, as well. Mm -hmm. And, Stephen, before I introduce you and you introduce yourself more, um, I, let me just say that uh, one of the... One of the features of Genius that's kind of amazing is that you can create your own class page. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't, and sometimes I use the public page. But you can, um, once something is up on Genius, you can embed that. And we have a site called youthvoices.net yeah. um, where we have missions and we collect things together. Um, and I've been using that bit for quite a bit. Um, on there, even the youthvoices.net slash missions description is a is a um, a genius embed that describes what a mission is. But but just to say um, that some of the ways that we've thought about integrating genius uh, with the work that we're already doing on that site. But Stephen, do you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Thank you so much for coming to us uh, at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, sure, um, nice. It's, um, it's my pleasure welcome. to be here. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I, I work for the site. Um, I'm, a lit, I'm the Lit Community staffer, so my main responsibility is just to help everyone that uses the Lit portion, portion of the site have a great time and get the most out of it that they possibly can. And, yeah, I've, I've, I mean, Jeremy uh, is the education lead who I guess some, some of you will know him. But um, yeah, uh, any, like, stuff on site, I'm, I'm always there to, to help out, to... Um, to turn on personal annotations, which uh, can be a big thing, uh, explain new features, walk, you know, um, edit maybe class pages sometimes. Uh, yeah, that's my job, uh, reaching out generally. So, and uh, so yeah, you, like, put, you both work on the, the platform and on the community side of things. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, uh, Jeremy is is more uh, a kind of um, uh, what's the, what's the right word? He 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 promotes it on a on the kind of uh, macro level where like you know speaking at seminars and stuff um, I work remotely obviously from from London but um, issues and um, queries and and things on the site you can um, always hit me up hit me up on a message there um, I really some of the ideas that have been thrown around here by the way already are just are awesome uh, some you know like uh, using using it for your own poetry is is brilliant that was one of the first things that I I really I really love the idea of um, like your own verified annotations, um, using it to help students break down their own poetry. I mean, if if you have someone who's who's really enthusiastic about his or her own work, um, they put it put it on the site and then and then annotate it themselves. That's like a massively empowering thing. So you just uh, said a word, you, Stephen, if you don't mind. Um, you just said a word there that could be unpacked. Verif your own verified annotations. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, anyone can anyone can um, like claim claim a verified account. Uh, you just have to like message a, a staffer on site. Put any any kind of text that you have. Like if, if it's like a rap you're working on, one of your students is working on. Um, yeah, you can um, message us and then we'll verify the account and then the annotations will appear in green. And you can also like record video annotations if that's the kind of thing that you want to do. Um, so 
yeah, I mean, like, the, there are a lot of possibilities there, I think, just, um, like, riffing off some of the ideas we've heard already. But, uh, but part, part of that also that um, people who don't know Genius may not know is that there are authors and musicians and, you know, people on the site who have verified, I mean, they, they annotate their own lyrics and so forth. That's yeah. part of what I wanted to point out, too. That's Sorry, funny. yeah, I no, I jumped good. in a bit with the um yeah the the big the big uh, thing is uh yeah um big artists uh, have verified accounts and they use them to explain uh, this their uh, Nas is there um, Judith Butler has one but um yeah the idea that that anyone can have one basically any any student any teacher whatever I I think that's um I don't think that's quite a big uh, uh, area for potential but yeah. The big thing I've seen lately that I love is um, apparently Rick Rubin has been hanging out a lot in Genius and, and yeah. annotating and marking up a lot of content. So, yeah. I mean, you have somebody that has a, a pretty vast knowledge of, of music, and he's just sitting around, like, marking up and, you know, talking about some of the content and some of the songs. So yeah. it's just it's I mean, amazing what people do. It was awesome to read them actually, because he came and just annotated loads of stuff that maybe some of a lot of which he'd worked on and other other stuff which he hadn't, which was awesome to get his opinion on that as well, right? Because he knows how to produce, he knows the history of pop music. Uh, yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, it's got a ton of, of press if you just um, Google Rick Rubin Genius. I'm just um, putting it so, in the Etherpad now. Yeah. Um, but could we, could we go ahead? Yeah, because of this, I think we're really like that idea of what that little verified tag means. Not just much it, to a student. That's basically they are a writer and a poet and a musician in a community of writers, poets, and musicians. Um, and that we've always been able to access that, you know, um, not not pop like culture. But to, to to basically be in a place where you're co-creating pop culture, um, and that's just I mean it's a perfect community of writers uh, that we're always trying to recreate. So there's a there's a lot to that little verified tag. <laughs> the small little the small little things mean so much to, to to students. Well, it goes back to what Sam was saying. I mean, if you're a student and you're not so sure about yourself and you don't see where you fit into the school, um, you don't feel validated. Um, if now you, this is a site where you're celebrating the, the word, you know, and now your word is just as valuable as others, you know, it's just as valuable as Jay-Z's rhymes or as Shakespeare's work. You're in the same book with everybody else and you can mark up your text with everybody else and, and we're celebrating and we're reading your work and your text. And um, yeah, all of your friends can read it as well, and they can they can click upvote, and they can click Pyong, and that kind of um, it's that kind of thing about like about Twitter, where if you if you tweet and you get a few favorites, you're like ninety percent more likely to continue using the service. Um, if you if you write a poem and your friends click upvote, I mean, hopefully the positive reinforcement is is really useful there. Can you feel validated between an upvote yeah. and a Pyong? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So to validate that, so the the kid who uh, posted his 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 rap when it when it got posted, you know, kids were buzzing about it, and then they were analyzing. They're like, "Is this rap? Is this poetry?" And then you even had some kids were like, hating on him, like, "Oh, I could do better than that." So it just creates this whole competitive um, space in the classroom, and so then other kids started posting. Um, the poems that we were working on in class, but the thing that made his special is that his wasn't a class assignment. It was just something that he did, and it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, I mean, like real rich metaphors. Like, I mean, the analysis that we did on his work was was like like you say, like a piece of literature that we would do in any other piece of uh, literature that we would do academically, and so that was really powerful. So, Sam, can I ask you, how would we find that? So um, I, I I'll post I'll post the I'll post the link to it, mm -hmm. um, but it's I think I put it as a class page and because I've been doing all of our stuff like just to make the I mean kids do stuff on their own outside of class I mean a lot of kids are like now doing uh, you know I find them on Rap Genius like in fact they'll they'll come oh I found this and they'll oh you should play this for the class or you should show this to the class. 
but they they're doing that outside of class. But um, yeah, I'll I'll I'll, s I'll send the link to uh, tomorrow's piece. I mean, that's one of the challenges that we had before in, in Walk My World. We put up a poem uh, talking about the difference differences between like a public page and a class page. We put up a poem in Walk My World. Kevin Hodgson would see a line that some that a poet would write, and he would he would get motivated, and he would want to riff off of that poem that line. So in Genius, he would write his own poem based upon that line. Mm -hmm. Well, he did that a couple times, and then editors would come through and basically delete it. And so it makes you wonder about like what is a true mm -hmm. annotation and what's not. Because it'd be kind of cool to have you know in Sam's class. Students would write like a, a poem or a rap, and then other students would come on and basically riff off of that one line or or elements of that. And I don't think that that's something that can happen, you know, in a public uh, on a public page in Genius. Uh, can I just jump on that? Uh, yeah. Like something that we've been like trying to roll out for a little while is is this um idea of, of personal annotation, and um it's not been like it's not been fully rolled out across the whole site yet, but I mean, it would be perfect for something like that, and I think it's it's really, really good for solving the dilemma of class versus public page. Um, the idea is that there's one genius annotation at the top, and then anyone can annotate however they like below it, and that'll just, that'll be attributed to them, and it won't change, because uh, it's, it's kind of, the idea is that it's not the product of a collaborative mission to annotate the internet, it's just someone's uh, okay. Like, it, like um, to use your terminology, someone riffing on someone else. Yep. Um, so they would be super useful for that. And if um, if you have a page where you want those to be able to be used, um, and you just um, shoot me a message or email or whatever, and I, I, I have the power to um, flick it on. And then you can get... It's like those kinds of discussions sound fascinating. It, it would be a shame for them to get, like, you know, edited out, as it were, from... You know, by people, you know, good-natured people, but maybe um, they don't understand the idea of the page in the first place. But no. Stephen, could you could you go back a second and say you just did say it there quickly, but say sort of the mission of Genius? I mean, it, it is like Wikipedia; it is about social annotation, right? I mean, okay, yeah. Um, I mean, it's um, it's it's quite a a big thing. I mean. I don't know if how much you know about this at the moment, but the big um, sort of uh, beta test is on for the tool to be able to annotate the web, to yeah. be able to annotate any website, even mm -hmm. if it isn't um, genius.com. Um, so there's there's two. I think there's there's two missions. Um, there's one is to explain everything, explain the world, and that is done by the genius branded annotations. So they're the product of you know a collaborative editorial mission. And often uh, students and educators can be a part of that, and they will all feed into this bigger. Another one is, um, you know, to discuss it. So, and that's the big thing with with what we call personal annotations and verified ones. So, there, that is your kind of impression or whatever or expansion on a text, and it's it remains there with no kind of obligation to be integrated into the big unilateral genius annotation. Right, and I, I think that um, if if I was um, teaching a class, I think that make the the idea. I think the personal annotations really um, offer a, I don't know, a, a much a much wider kind of playing field, so that everyone can kind of jump in without feeling obligated to contribute to the genius annotation. If that makes sense. So just to be technical for a second, uh, once once we have been approved as editors, right, we can create. Yeah. And and it's pretty simple. We can send an email to you or to Jeremy Dean or somebody in 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 Ed um, Genius, and pretty quickly we can become those editors. Um, and then we can take a public page and make it into a class page. Is it called a class page? I think. Uh, or we yeah, there's no um, yeah, there's no technical distinction. Just um, yeah, I usually just put brackets class page because a lot of them are. Uh, just so it's easily identifiable, because you will get editors um, jumping on them saying these annotations are all wrong and they've been accepted as like a class page. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. but, uh, <laughs> so, so <laughs> but but and, and then on that class page, those individual annotations are, are automatically there. I think, right? I think so. 
Um, they have oh. been on the ones I've created. Oh, I see. Right. Um, I I didn't actually know that. Yeah, um, I think so. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So which is okay. which is sweet because that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and what is nice is that my students put their individual annotations on things, and then we can figure out how to how to collaborate around those to make the genius annotation afterwards. So there's been a really yeah, interesting yeah. process around all that. Um, haven't used the video as much as I'd like to, but that's a really cool tool as well. But, yeah. but that's um, automatically on, on the class pages too, by the way. I see, right. Yeah, I'll, um, that's great. And yeah, the video is, is kind of a... It used to be verified artists only. Now it's like anyone can access it if they're if they're writing or, or recording a personal annotation. So, mm -hmm. so that's really cool, yeah. yeah. yeah I think um, I'm actually going to play with that video annotations because I'm um, working on a project where um, I'm trying to work on uh, teaching credibility of websites. I'm hoping, you know, where it will dovetail if, if the timing works out. I'm waiting to see, you know, as the annotating the whole web, um, the beta test. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I've played yeah. around a little bit, and um, but I want to like put in like little biased um, annotations, like where it's somebody's like if we were looking at looking at climate change documents, like somebody you know who's uh, you know science denier um, to use a not a political but correct term um, that you know have them attack a site and then have somebody from you know some you know granola crunchy Audubon you know card carry member support the site. Um, through annotations, and so I'm I'm going to play with that idea a little bit of kind of like building in bias to help kids because whenever we teach how to when we teach source credibility, kids kind of miss the contextuality and and uh, you know how how words shape truth and power, um, and I want to kind of play with that a little bit. Um, so that that might be something I I try to do in the future with that kind of video stuff, and I'm looking forward to kind of fooling around. I haven't seen the video part yet. It's um because I I love it. it I vote I, I I love using Genius, but then the challenge is you have to like grab text, plop it into the frame, and edit within Genius. But then I love um, I guess we're allowed to talk about it now. You know the adding that annotation layer. You know the 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 layer of meaning on top of what's currently happening online, um, and so. You know, I want to be able to, it's like Digo, but better. You know, I want to send my students out and have them, and we collaboratively look at a text. The The challenge has always been, and I put messages out there, you know, if, if there's a, a Google Doc out there, or if there's a PDF, you know, that we want to, to, to annotate. Um, but then I've, I, you know, I want to, as Greg just mentioned, I'm big in visual literacy and, and digital literacy. I want to have my students annotate and mark up images, infographics, videos, anything. You know, I want that social commentary that we can all have. Um, you know, as a group, collectively, we can go look at it, mark it up, annotate it, and comment on it. So, and just to be more specific, or, so if you put genius.com, right? Yeah. Um, slash in front of any, any or in between the HTTP slash slash and, and the rest of the address, that becomes a, a page um, that can be annotated. I mean, I, I just very quickly, and not to complain, but just to say that PDFs don't seem to work, right, um, that way. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, H um, I, I've also has... had tr trouble with um, secure sites. HTTPS sites don't seem to work that way. But as you can tell, I, oh, I haven't lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually yeah, yeah. Um, clicked. I mean, I have the um, I have the little bookmark that I've just installed on my on my mm. bookmarks bar, and that like kind of saves me the trouble of typing in. I've never yeah. um, I've never clicked it on a HD, on a secure one actually. That's I have to give that a try. That's I'm not sure it why. Sense. It doesn't seem to have some. Uh, yeah, yeah. But but can, 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 can I ask you a quick? I mean. What's the does does that page go to Genius then and, and like what's the uh, is this going to survive <laughs> copyright uh, questions or <laughs> yeah um, I mean I like it but I, I'm worried about it too <laughs> you're not the yeah, lawyer I mean, for Genius I don't mean to put you in the spot <laughs> yeah I can't there's only like so much I can say um, <laughs> on that issue 
You know, um, you're wrapping another it, box and putting a div inside a div. Yeah. Um, you know, that's you're basically putting you're wrapping something around a website. And you own the wrapper per se. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean it, it, it's in I don't I'm not no lawyer, but I think in a way you're kind of deep embedding the link. You're it's basically linking back to that page and, and it's a wrapper on top. Like a, uh-huh. another piece on top. Um, whether it goes away, that's that's a that's a you know a whole other issue. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, fun, but we don't need to get into that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's still I love it. Um, I love. The I mean, ultimately, the aim is to add is to add value to websites, and I think like it's a it's a, it's a kind of positive uh, kind of mission. But but as you say, I mean, there are people who's cool with it. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway. Yeah, so. Well, I think that, that there's, um, you know, my view is that ownership is changing online. I think that we're still in between two models. Um, my concern is less that rap ge- a genius and everybody else is going to get sued, in, you know, into the Stone Age. My concern is that as everything, you know, as, a, as many of the things uh, online, we see that things iterate quickly, and it would be a shame to see stuff disappear. That's my fear. It's not the, the copyright issue or anything else. It's seeing this awesome social annotative layer that would disappear. Um, is there is there a way um, to have individual, if I have like an annotation of a page, can you like link to other annotations? Because that's, to me, that would be interesting. Is like if you go in and you have like a poem or, or a rap song yeah. and you start annotating it, you see, oh, somebody else has it, but they have like different spin on it. It would, it would be cool to see some intertextuality between all of these annotative layers, if that makes sense. Uh, it makes perfect sense, and it's a lot. It's a thing that I try to do a lot myself, um, especially like when I'm annotating Shakespeare or whatever. Um, you know, I, I remember when I was taught Shakespeare, you, you get um, a massive concordance in the library, kind of dumped on the table, and if you want to find where kind of words and phrases are repeated. Um, if you go onto your profile page and then you, look, you can see all the annotations that you've made and below each one there'll be a button saying share and then you click that and then you can get the link. So each annotation has its own link. And then, yeah, you can either just paste it in raw to the new annotation or use kind of a little bit of formatting. Um, you put the reference text in the square brackets and then the link in uh, rounded brackets. And that will that will link it right up. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I should. So I've, I've, I've I, done I a tutorial quite, of this. So. Tell me, tell me what that does again. I don't. I didn't follow that. Okay. So I mean, yeah. if you want to link to another annotation, um, you have to go to your profile page um, on I the site, see. and that's that's where you can grab the link from to the annotation that you want to link. I mean, it's not. Um, it's a process that, yeah, it's maybe a bit convoluted at the moment. It's something that, like, kind of we're working on getting, uh, you know, getting a lot quicker. But um, yeah, as it stands, when you're annotating uh, the web, that's that's the way to get um, that's the way to get the link to your to your other annotations or anyone's other annotations. It's almost like the like a Wikipedia model or like a hypertext piece model, where you have links and connections across documents and across people's annotations. Um, you know, I, I think we need a lot of little screencasts from you. Yeah, um, I use that quite a lot. Uh, when uh, people, like, do great annotations, they reference stuff, and I show them how to do the link. Um, I, I'll um, I'll find one and share it, actually. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I want to go back to the um, editors, because I, I, I wanted to suggest that how really good they are, and what I love about... Um, mm-hmm. And I do recommend that teachers don't start their students on the public pages just because um, the the quality of the annotations is so high. But, but I love the fact that that kids get to see the, the the true like academic discourse, disciplinary literacies of you know of literacy and al- literary analysis. But it's done with you know kind of that the you know. Kind of with just a, a modern kind of pop edge. It's got you know a lot of hip hop culture. Like even through like, especially when you when you watch the editors like go at it on the forums. I mean the yeah, the forums aren't um they're not always um they're NS they're not safe for work all the time for your kids. But these editors are passionate. 
and they bring kind of like you know their own kind of vibe, and it's it's a lot of fun to to watch the the editors work. Uh, sorry, on just on the forum tip, um, it is kind of a a scary experience to go on them. I mean, even for me, uh, when I've been working for the site, um, the Lit Genius Forum is 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 cool. I think I, we have like a kind of different um, vibe, as you can probably guess. The, the the rap forums and the general forums can can be a bit heavy, but um, I think I, I I try my best to create, and we have some really co- like people who are interested in literature, right? Compared to um, you know, they're they're generally um quite softly spoken, and and uh, I don't know how to put it. Yeah, but um. I see what I uh, well, thought. Stephen, what I can throw in on that, and I wanted to respond to Greg here. Um, I mean, I, I've had kids on public pages kind of from the get-go when it's a text that's appropriate to kids, mm-hmm. right? So the Sandra Cicerino stuff that um, that it's it, it's absolutely appropriate to have kids' voices annotate that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And and editors seem to recognize that or whatever. The, the, you know, it's 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 been good to to do to have that in the public space. Um, however, I've moved more toward the, the 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 school pages or the class pages because of the advantage of having individual um, annotations. But yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see the appeal definitely of doing that. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, are you there? Patrick, are you there? <laughs> Not yet. You're muted, if you are. Okay. He's, yeah, he's in the he's in the chat on the side there. But... Yeah, he's yeah. chatting over there. Stephen, okay. I got a question for you because you see so, you see you look at Genius every day. You're involved every day. You're you're integrated. What are some recent things that you've seen happening on Genius that just blow your mind? Like some things that you never, I mean, you have to see some stuff that just blows your mind That's it, you can't even believe that people did that. Yeah, well, um, I guess, I mean, are we, are we going about like technical stuff that the site kind of let Technical, you like, annotated, just stuff that, stuff that you, yeah. The most, um, probably the best annotation I've seen over the last, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know if you heard the new Lupe. There's a, a new Lupe Fiasco album, and um, he has like a chorus or a hook, and he like kind of talks about like different um, different like kind of uh, bad choices that like kind of people can make in their youth, and it's like oh you you were around the projects as a as a baby, or then or you you were chasing money as a baby, and someone had actually managed to unravel that, and he's referencing like six different classic album covers which have babies on the front and um, so one of them is like Nirvana, Nevermind um, another one is, is Nas, Illmatic uh, another one is um, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Uh, Ready to Die and they just like compiled them all together and then so you could see the six album covers and next to the lyrics and I would have never ever in a million years of like listening I could listen to that song a hundred times I'd never have understood that but um, they they like just. I mean, it's not great technical skill, obviously, but it just looked. It was just brilliant, and it was like I would. You know, this is something. Boom! I would never have understood how sort of deeply, kind of obviously, Lou had like worked on that, and um, yeah, it was it was brilliant to see, and brings a whole a whole new layer of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, can, could I could I direct that a little bit into Shakespeare because that's one yeah. of the things. Yeah, I mean. Sorry. Yeah, that was. Um, talk, talk, no, that's fine. Whatever else you'd like to answer that question, but also I'd love for you to describe what's available um, around Shakespeare and and how how you're how you see people using it. Um. So one of the biggest things that we're trying to do in Shakespeare. Um. A lot of it at the moment is me and the other kind of lit community staff, uh, um, Austin, Austin Allen. I, I, I don't know if you have spoken with him before, um, but we're, we're, we're working really hard on the Shakespeare pages to make them like a resource for, well, for students and educators. So, I mean, it is a work in progress, but like um, I, if you use them, you know, like the kind of description on the right hand side that comes up, like when you first open the page, we're trying to give like a really um, kind of like detailed scene summary, excuse me, in every single one. Uh, so you can like click through to like important parts of the text. 
let me pull one up and link it for you, actually. Uh, so, because I think one of the, sorry, I think one of the biggest okay. um, kind of barriers to understanding Shakespeare is that look, it's, um, it's archaic language and there's a lot going on. There's like more plot than a lot of Hollywood films, um, and it's really hard to work out like who's who and what's what. So um, the idea was that um, you know we would kind of like give people, I don't know, like a basis to start studying from. So you can read um, the summary, and then boom, you sort of understand what's going on in the scene. Um, here we go. Uh, mm -hmm. um, another thing that we're trying quite hard to do is to like cite the kind of the appropriate secondary reading and sources. Um, I remember when I was doing like undergraduate kind of level essays, and I, I know that a lot of them were marked purely just to see if we could reference. And I think that kind of understanding referencing and sources is quite a big thing. So, um, in the annotations that I do, I try to like kind of just have a a line beneath them and then a link to the source. Often it will just be like uh, the um, like a scholarly edition of Shakespeare, like the Oxford Wells Classics one. Or, or the Arden one, and then that's like clickable so they can see that it came from a book, and that's like, I don't know, it's like a proper citation and a, uh, something you can do follow up reading on. Uh, yeah. And uh, let me, are, are teachers uh, using uh, these pages, or how is, how is this happening in classrooms? Do you know yet? Um, I, well, like I said, I mean, we're probably about halfway through the project, so. Um, mm -hmm. They haven't. I'm not sure to the extent to which they've um, been used in classes. I know, like like Macbeth and Hamlet are both um, completely solid. Um, they all have like scene descriptions, and yeah, I think like some of them have the the personal annotations turned on so people can like kind of add their own thoughts. But yeah, I mean, um, Shakespeare is is obviously a, a huge project. Was well, that right on the Shakespeare yeah. pages on on the on Hamlet the the personal annotations are turned on? Uh, some of them are because we had um, contributors getting into like really heated arguments about the meanings of particular passages, uh, which was kind of cool to see. But at the same time, they were going like back and forth in a really unproductive way. So um, in the end, I just let them kind of stand on their own as like as like personal annotations. So if, um, if there was a scene there that wasn't turned on yet, did I hear you say earlier we could email you and you you would turn that on for us? I uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I'm really keen to get them like turned on as as widely as as possible. Uh, okay. but, yeah. mm -hmm. Sam, I, I want to get you back in here. Uh, uh -huh. Talk about how you're using this again <laughs> in your class. Yeah. So or what are you uh, thinking? Yeah. So, yeah, actually, I'm using it on multiple levels. So first I started with just, you know, uh, you know, trying to connect with my kids with uh, sharing uh, rap lyrics and, like, uh, you know, doing some some discourse around the rap lyrics. But, I mean, like, basically, like, uh, like a, the thing that I've seen that's, like, really having the impact, right, is I'm going to have a kid do a deep reading on a poem that's like real dense text, right? And I got kids of varying levels. I got kids that are like struggling readers and I got kids that are like advanced readers. So dense for one kid might not be for another, but go ahead, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but so so the thing that I've observed is that when I have kids go spend time on rap genius where they first of all is creating a socially constructed space which we have a one-to-one -one laptop. We have one-to-one -one laptop at our school, and this is the first time a lot of kids have had like this technology like school-wide. So a lot of kids are like using devices for just straight distraction, right? But now they have the they have uh, Rap Genius as a distraction that's connecting them with you know the discourse that we're having in class, and <laughs> so the kids that are the kids that are spending time on Rap Genius. When now they have to do an academic, um, you know, essay on that poem, it's much richer. I mean, it's like the difference is like, like really stark. And some kids are like not even like, wow, I did this. And part of it is that they had this engagement as opposed to just having 
like reading the poem and then trying to write trying to write a, a, a essay uh, you know a, a critical response essay uh, about a poem right mm -hmm. and so that that's that's been powerful um, I've I've done it with like by we've been doing like a whole bunch of nonfiction texts and so I I, I upload excerpts of the nonfiction texts on Rap Genius again have them uh, do uh, you know this text rendering that we do in the writing project right so now we're mm -hmm. taking text rendering and like having them find videos so find the line find a phrase find a a, a word but now they get to uh, connect by finding a um, you know a video or a picture or a quote and it's making it powerful and again those kids that are struggling readers I mean they could find one word in it in that in that compilation and then they they have success of like but going you know because they're proficient with going on finding videos and finding songs and I mean like kids taking big pride in uh, being able to be engaged in in the Kind of like in the conver in the grand conversation because they would just like the paper itself they would be lost and so that that's been really powerful, um, and I can say the, the the my next my next phase is Sam like, I just want to I just want to emphasize what I think I heard you say there because there are some who would say okay that kid's not really understanding that they're just picking up a word and finding an image related to it right so how's that really understanding or reading anything. But I think you're saying that there is a process that involves them in a community of readers that eventually gets them to be more thoughtful annotators. Have you seen that happen? Is that yeah, a fair yeah. thing? Particularly if, like now, the same kid, like, I mean, he has an IEP and, you know, like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'll, I worry about him, right? Mm -hmm. But... He can he can uh, he can find a picture. He can find a video. He can talk with you about it. Although he's not going to be able to read that text of you know that he's not going to be able to make unless I'm sitting and holding his hands. He's not going to be able. He's not going to be able to make like real deep meaning with with the text. And I mean, you know, we're a public school, we're open enrollment school. We have to take all the kids that come through our doors, and I have to find some kind of way. Uh, to engage them, and this 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 is creating this is creating that um, that space. Um, and uh, I'm 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 fortunate. I'm you know I'm I'm happy about it. Interestingly, though, this week or last oh so last week, right after the American Music Awards came out, there was an art a local article in in Inquirer about you know hip hop is being appropriated, and so we 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 loaded that up. And we we dug into it, and because we're moving into like argumentative, argumentative uh, writing, and um, again, really rich conversations about like who like who owns hip hop, who uh, who you know who 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 we're uh you know like the Iggy Azalea lady and this Azalea Banks lady and that this whole debate and this whole controversy and just really rich conversation, which kind of leads me to open it up. This question around, because some people are like even having the same concerns about like like rap genius. Is it like a like how is rap genius in terms of like appropriating rap and da 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 da? And I'm curious to hear like like folks read on that um, because me and my students. I mean, we we didn't talk about rap genius as their appropriate as as it's appropriating or not appropriating, but like just this whole thing about around culture. But interesting, like a lot of kids like. Well, you know, yeah, rap music was, uh, you know, it was originated in, in in the black black Latino black and Latino communities, but it's you know it's a global force, and so you can't say it's one it's only one group that that has you know the right to claim it, and then it was other kids that had other 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 sides on the debate. So that was like really really rich. I'm really looking forward to they're going to be doing some essays around that. Really looking forward to um looking at those essays. Hopefully. Hey Sam, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, to to take a step back to um, uh, the questions earlier about you know reading and stuff like that, you have your students, you know, writing and sharing their text, their raps on Genius, and they're annotating and they're reviewing and critiquing each other's text. Um, I'm interested in how it, do your students have like a preference? Do they see 
the value in certain the, the techno babble the, the the academic speak I would use is uh, the term affordances. Do they see value in the text version or the like the performance or the the vocalization of the rap or video or the like? What do they prefer as they look across? Because you said earlier, you know, you're, some of your students say, well, that's not really rap. This is what it is. So. You know, do they do they need to hear it? Do they need to see it? Do they need to just read it? What are your students? What what do they value the most? No, they they value they value hearing it most because that's what they 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 value hearing and seeing it most because that's what they um because that's what they're accustomed to. But giving them the lens of looking at it on text is like kind of I'm not say it's a new experience, but it's it's a deeper experience, and so um. They're, particularly that they're able to like intersect both the text with the visual with the audio and so like that whole confluence and intersection of it yeah I think, I think they're I think they're 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 liking um I think they're liking that as well and then also the other thing is like I'm I've become a co-learner with them uh, as I'm the old dude right <laughs> And like, I'm becoming like fascinated with, uh, you know, like this whole De Iggy and Azalea Banks, Iggy Azalea and Azalea Banks debate. I mean, I was like totally immersed and intrigued by this whole debate, and I'm like, wow, I'm like learning it. And then they're become they're teaching me things as well. Um, like one of my kids, we're having a, we're, you know, we're having this debate, and he just gave a whole like. Dissertation or what's trap music, right? Trap, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like a, a southern, you know, it's like a genre of of hip. And he was saying like basically trap trap music or trap hip hop is like controlling and influencing all of hip hop now. And like the way he was able to like give his assertion, give reasons, give evidence. I mean, you know, he used a couple of curse words here and there, and I told him like, well, in academic discourse, that's not going to fly, but. Awesome! Like wow, I was like really impressed with this kid. Anyway, I'm I'm I'm, I'm right. Stephen, yeah. Stephen, you put in the chat that uh, that uh, something here. I, I assume you're saying genius is a gateway drug yeah. for post reading to literary text. I mean, I'm <laughs> certainly <laughs> noticing, and I want to I want to kind of um, give credit and hear a little bit from Sam uh, about how his classroom and his teaching does this too, but certainly genius is a place where, you know, I, I have students when I introduce it say, you know, I've ruined genius, uh, I've ruined rap genius because now they have to do, you know, schoolwork on it, but, um, you know, but, but, but it is a place where you can move kind of seamlessly from Shakespeare to, to pop culture and to your own work back and forth, right? I mean, is that what you mean by the gateway drug comment? Uh, yeah, um, so I was just, it was on something that Sam was saying at the time where like, um, he was, well, we were talking about, uh, like, how, how do you want to uh, have a, you know, how do you want to experience rap music? Do you want the performance or do you want the lyrics? And I think obviously the performance is, is primary, but then, I mean, that's, this is how I came to the site. I was listening to rap music and I, <laughs> they were saying something that I knew obviously had a lot of, a lot of meaning and a lot of, a lot of play behind it and, you know, their own their own kind of slang, a kind of basically a kind of a language that I didn't understand. I wanted I wanted to know exactly what it was that that I was hearing, and I think that's what Genius offers in a way. Like I mean, it started with Rap Genius. Um, one of the founders said a while back, "Is because rap is at the cutting edge of culture right now." And if you if you can like break down a, a verse or whatever, or like build up a passionate argument about trap, um, why then that's going to make you a really good close reader. A lot of people like who want to construct raps, uh, break or break down raps by famous rappers. They're they're just naturally really good close readers. Sorry, not naturally, but kind of after that, um, the uh, it's kind of the process, I guess, for like uh, kind of weaning people onto Shakespeare. So yeah, like you say, so it becomes ingrained, right? You you want to close read stuff. You want to become a close reader and and like have you know understand how something was constructed. Um, if you can do that with rap, then why can't you do it? With Shakespeare, or with something, 
uh, something a bit closer in time to, to, to our own time. I mean, Shakespeare is, is, is the hard one, obviously, but, uh, but yeah. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's all I meant, really. Like, I, I thought it was a good way to wean them on. Well, what, kind of, what kind of video and sound do you put up around Shakespeare? Uh, this is a really good question. Um, I, with um, kind of older texts, I often try and look for, like, uh, like paintings and stuff. Uh, like they'll because I mean Shakespeare deals with a lot of mythological themes, a lot of Roman mythology especially. So I try and find uh, paintings of that. Um, I I I mean obviously the kind of the academic uh, rigor has to come first and foremost. But if I can sneak pop culture references in, I, I do. Um, the one I the annotation I linked to in in the chat there is um, uh, like so often with Shakespeare you'll find like words that are in or phrases idioms that are in like kind of common discourse. You didn't even realize it that like the, that one was like uneasy as the head that wears the crown, which became heavy as the head that wears the crown, and obviously that's a huge uh, kind of idea and symbol in, in rap music of being like the king of rap or the god of rap, whatever. Um, th- yeah, uh, let me think about multi. Another thing that we've been trying to do with um, the scenes is like uh, insert the kind of YouTube videos of performances of them, in which that kind of makes it a lot more immediate. Um, mm-hmm. I know with like um, we have a separate page for to be or not to be that has um, obviously there's been, like there's like tons of performances of that as Lawrence Olivier, um, mm-hmm. Kenneth Branagh, um, and we have those. Um, yeah, I guess uh, basically the closer that, the literature that's something kind of a gets, student, that's, right. that's something a student could do too, right? They could say, "Let me take this this soliloquy or this this part of the play and and build something around it, and then put that up on the page." That would be I mean, possible to do. Yeah. That, that would be, yeah, of course. Oh, I want um, your kids to perform an entire play through video annotation. <laughs> <laughs> have the rules, have the lines. You click on the. I mean, it's it's possible because you can annotate, you can video annotate every every line. Yeah. So I want to see. Right. Yeah. Gonna put on the first full play um, using the video annotations. That's um, kind of yeah. I'd yeah. I'd love to hear what the RSC had to say about that. <laughs> Can I ask a technical question? Is it still true that to put up sound or video, it has to be in YouTube or in um, what's the other? SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud. Uh, Is that true? You can't put up like a. You can't just put up a video, a a, um, a, a sound file in any way. On the site, um, on a page, so you've got the the kind of add video audio at the top, right? Like, right. and that has to be YouTube or SoundCloud. But okay. if you just inside an annotation, uh, you have a lot more freedom. You can put a Vimeo, or most things will embed uh, in sort of in the annotations rather than okay. in that sort of like place at the top. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I've used yeah I've used like Vimeo and uh, other kind of so um, yeah the, the embed so is really good. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, like I said, we would put them in like the description. We would put the Vimeo uh, performance or whatever. Just mm-hmm. in that annotation, that comes up. So, and staying on the technical side um, of things a little bit, I, and I wanted to ask you guys about uh, Walk My World. Is there a way to go to see all the Walk My World work anywhere? Have you guys figured I that think out? Posted, I'm, gonna, I'm actually rebuilding our, our website now, but um, my unfortunately, my uh, collaborators forced me to use Google. Google um, Ian's trying um, to get back. So I, so I can't do that as well. But we're gonna, if you find Ian O'Byrne on Genius, there'll be a link there, and I'll I'm gonna build a page now. I was kind of working on it while we're chatting that links so, to all the poems that we um, annotated. Um, so I'm gonna I'll throw that link. I'm working on it right now, and I'll I'll send that out to everybody. So the other thing the other thing that I started to do and want to uh, you know I'm always about trying to get not just my students but students elsewhere kind of connected, um, is is that um, wh- almost anything that I put up on the site or, or, or want to use with my own students, I add a, um, it is called a tag, right? Um, a co- th- that's called Youth Voices. And so there is now a Youth Voices page, right? And then... Oh, we need to tag everything. Right, so everything gets tagged as Youth Voices, and then... And then all that goes to the same page, right? So there is sort of like a class page there. No, that's perfect. Of stuff, right. right. Uh, yeah, just quickly on the tag thing. Yeah, if um if you have like a group of texts, um, you can like it's re- sometimes it can be really useful just to add have a tag that is the name of the class or whatever, and then 
that will like, kind of automatically generate a page. Um, so like we have it for like we have quite a lot of like uh, Harper Collins, the publisher excerpts, and they have they're quite um, pleased to have their own page, and sometimes that can be quite a useful kind of like a you can have a like as a focal point, you know, um, mm-hmm. has all the different texts, and then it'll, you'll also have who's the top scholar of that particular tag that week, right. so you can kind of get some competitive juice from that. And what are the stamps you can make, or is that that's not the right language? But there's some some sort of thing you can make to 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 decorate that page better? Do you not uh, know? I'm... Like, um, yeah, postlets. Po- is that what it's um, called? Okay, yeah. How yeah. do you do that? <laughs> the, um, you have to be... Uh, no, I think editors can do them. Let me just pull up yeah. a tag page so I can, like, look at it as I'm talking about it. So you can, uh, you can highlight certain things like with, certain with things postlets? Is postlets? that what it is? Yeah. Um, so, like, I mean, it, it's like on the, on the front page of of rap genius, you have the hottest new album or whatever. Um, on the yeah, you can. We, I mean, we we control that, and um, as an ad pan, also you can control it um, too. I mean, you just right. Yeah. So I mean, at the bottom left hand corner, there'll be like it'll say postlets colon, and there'll be like new postlet. Uh, there is actually it's kind of a complicated process to make a postlet. This is what um, I found. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is a guide. There is a guide. Uh, is a guide. Okay. Can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll find it. It's all right. Yeah, we can. Find it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just um, it relies on the way that they're ordered relies on kind of like a little bit of. Code but you can basically stuff. create yeah. your own page for your class then, or in my case, what uh, precisely. Yeah, you can control. Uh-huh. Yeah, you could would control uh, all of it. Like, I mean, once the youth voices thing running, I can like. Uh, and you've done some stuff, I can kind of look over it if that would be sure. helpful. I know it's like a difficult thing. But yeah, yeah, basically you control everything, essentially, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Can I ask a question about the tags? Because I just went to go start an annotation on one of ours, and I see this, the box say something interesting. Um, I can save and enter. I don't, do I just type in the tag in the box, or is it, is it a short code? Uh it sounds like you're on an annotation. Sorry. Um. So, you're, what page are you on? I can ask offline. Um, oh, sure, sure. I think you can just type it, and it becomes a tag then. And as long as you type it the same every time, it finds it again. Right? It's, um, it's that simple. So, you're sorry. An editor, are, you, yeah. are you on a text? Like. Um, yeah. So I you click edit on, and the top right. right. I'll, I'll ask later. But I, it, it, you know, and sure. I'll sure. send out the good. details to everybody how it worked. We're in the weeds here, yes, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Ian, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> I, I said something earlier about copyright, and immediately Comcast just dragged me down. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I don't think... Comcast we, and the NSA. Why don't we try to wrap up here a little bit, um, and if you don't mind starting with your last thoughts here as, as, as we're done. And thanks for checking in here tonight. I think it's... It, it's um, Tools like Genius are powerful because we need to provide opportunities for, you know, for our students, but then also ourselves, uh, and I mean educators, but also you know the normal people out there that that aren't playing with this stuff, to to think about online information, just information in general, and what can we do with it? How can we play with it? Um, you know, what are, how can we innovate? You know, how can we move forward? Um, I, I think that we shouldn't just look at content that's online and, and the ways that we socialize and assume this is it. You know, um, I think that there's, you know, there's a future that's unforeseen yet and the way that we get there is we start to play with tools like Genius and we, we annotate, we remix, we, you know, embrace like a mashup culture. So I think it's, this is the first step, uh, but we, we all need to continue and think about, you know, where do we go from here? And Greg, your thoughts. Instead, um, where's that link? To, oh, my, the link for me is that this isn't this isn't the the, um, the newest step. I mean, it was the first step. A- annotations was one of our the very first cognitive tools. Um, as soon as we learned to write, that we developed. Uh, and to to me, that's the fact that we've taken this cognitive tool of annotations and built a community around it. Um, is while we were able to re- use a lot of this this remix culture in there, it's, it's almost like a, a return to the roots um, of of breaking it out and, and allowing other people to kind of play 
and remix with it. Um, so it's just we've been remixing text since since we've had text. So I'm having a lot of fun playing. It's we're connecting the oldest text with kind of our newest text at the same time. Yeah. And Sam, I got. I, I just want to say that I totally identify. But if you have any other thoughts here at the end, what you said earlier about this is a distraction that leads back to class. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, also yeah. it's, it's like in reinvigorating, you know, me and my in in in, in my own intellectual curiosities, and, and in fact, like finding this bridge because like connected learning is so important, right? And so finding this bridge is really really important. And I'm I'm looking at um. I'm, I'm, I'm like in my mind. I have an article that I'm working on where I'm going to talk about not really talk about rap genius, but I'm going to talk about how I'm using like this, you know, using hip hop in a way to like have a bridge for you know like you know hardcore academic you know uh, academic ev advancement, and so I'm I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Stephen. Thank you so again for coming tonight. Uh, no, thanks for having me and uh, for the invite. Like it's been it's been awesome to learn. Well, I've, yeah, I've learned a lot about how how you're using it and how how it might be used in the future. And yeah, it's given me a lot of great ideas. So yeah, thank you. Just want to say um, on Youth Voices, um, when students a lot of th times students say are doing individual inquiries, um, and when they find articles and they share those articles with each other. I go and throw the uh, genius um, link in, and then, but it hasn't happened yet. So, I mean, it ha what hasn't happened yet is they. It's the tool is a, is is faster. It, it can do a lot more than than I'm able to use in class yet. I just want to say that, and that, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. But but I want to see a lot more happening around the social interaction than is happening in my own classes yet. But but the I tool is amazing. But yeah. Go ahead. You've got to be brutally selective, I guess. Um, you know, to to get any sort of order and coherence to the thing, right? <laughs> I think yeah, the social thing. I hope I'm I'm hope with the kind of off with the annotate the internet and the like personal annotations. I'm hoping yeah, like we've only seen the first steps of it so far. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Um, want to want to say that uh, next week we um, we have with us uh, Renee Watson is going to be with us. She has just written a book called um, This Side of Home, and she is uh, going to be uh, Linda Christensen is going to be with us as well. Um, this Side of Home is a young adult novel. But it, and it was dedicated to Linda Christensen. Um, and there's a teacher from Portland. The book takes place in Portland, and a couple of students, we hope, um, from Portland as well. So that's going to be happening here next week, um, next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and 2 a.m. in London. Thank you <laughs> so much for coming by. Um, and we'll talk to you all again. Um, Ed Tech Talk is the uh, channel that we broadcast over the World Bridges Network. Um, and uh, Jeff Lebo and Dave Formier set that up several years ago. Thank you all for coming tonight, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.